it seems wrong for the U.S. to be charging a membership fee into the second-class citizens club that is DACA, especially since their way of justifying this act is by stating the fact that these people broke the law. If this is what they believe to be fair, then surely uh, Native Americans would be living in castles. Yeah, this is the right place. This, I want to talk about DACA. I know you never you never got it, but uh, you probably know enough about it, uh, being an advocate. What I want to do is I want to read you a little a little something, and then I'll, you just give me your opinion on it. All right, all right. So it seems wrong for the U.S. to be charging a membership fee into the second class citizens club that is DACA especially since their way of justifying this act is by stating the fact that these people broke the law. If this is what they believe to be fair, then surely uh, Native Americans would be living in castles, considering that this country broke a lot of laws in, well, genocide and all these things. So well, what do you think? Yeah, I think that's right on whoever wrote that. It's beautiful. Did you write that? I read that. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Um, I think, yes, I think that the most effective way to illustrate a point is to actually create that sort of, that analogy, that metaphor. And that's exactly what you did with Native Americans. So that is exactly what DACA is. It's like this sort of second class citizenship saying, you know, we're not going to really give you anything, but we're just going to keep you quiet and satisfied for a minute. But we benefit because we're collecting the money. So every couple of years, you have to spend, I don't know what the fee is now. It's like 600 or is it? Yeah, five? I think it's like yeah. between right. four and six. Yeah, exactly. And you're not, we're not sure if you're going to get it. So I think that's what people don't realize that not just with DACA, with every, when you think about all these different relief programs, they're not free. I think people forget that. Like when you're applying for any of these types of reliefs, anything around immigration, none of it is free compiled with sometimes you need an attorney. And yes, you might be able to get a pro bono attorney, but even that there's there are fees, sometimes hidden fees associated with that. So absolutely, I could not agree more that one, DACA is not a path to citizenship. It's temporary and it's very limited. I'm not going to like, you know, one, I'm grateful that it exists because it's something, but it's like, it's like someone who's, you know, impoverished and has no food and then they're given, you know, bad meat, you know, meat that's gone bad for, I mean, they'll take it, they'll eat it because it's something, but you know what I mean? That's, that's kind of how I see DACA. And, um, and you know, it, it, one, it, not all dreamers qualify for DACA. The only reason that it's not that I didn't choose DACA, it's that I didn't qualify. I missed the age requirement by five months. Right. Yeah. And so I, I think it's important that I wish your story and my story around DACA was more obvious to the media uh, and, and more recognized because I think, like I said, a lot of elected officials or, you know, politicians are running for elections. They're using the term DACA, 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 like throwing it out like it's the answer. And what the public is doing is because they don't hear stories like yours and mine. They're like, yes, DACA is a solution where and this person is going to have sign, you know, reinstate DACA. Great. No, it doesn't offer a solution. Really, it's temporary and you can renew your DACA and you may not get it renewed and you may have spent hundreds of dollars or you may not even qualify because because of some arbitrary age range that they capped it at where you miss it by five months. And you know what? The reality is there are 2.9 million dreamers out there who do not qualify for DACA for various reasons, right? But I think it's important to acknowledge that. And so what you just read encapsulates all of that. I, there's a point that you made of the uncertainty, the uncertainty not knowing whether you're, you're going to get it or not, because you don't know at any point, this is discretionary, discretionary. The person accept, going through the application can say, well, I'm having a bad day. 
Right. And that's it. And you can't do anything. That's it. You can't. Can, that's it. That's it. You have been denied. It's completely and, subjective, right? It's subjective, like you said. Yeah. So uh, you are living in a prison, this prison of second class citizenship. And then you're living in the prison of uncertainty. And it's, do you think people should feel comfortable with this program? With DACA? Yeah. No, I think we need to challenge it. It's not enough. It's not good enough. It's not widespread enough. I believe that that's why, I mean, I'm, I am pushing for HR 6, the Dream and Promise Act. I mean, really, if you think about it, DACA was a response to the original DREAM Act not being passed. I was one of the people that testified on Capitol Hill on behalf of Congress for the original DREAM Act. And that bill died. I mean, it was, you know, it went between the House and the Senate for years, and it died. And so DACA was a way to kind of shut people up a little bit, like immigration organizers yeah. who were pushing and pushing and pushing and protesting. So the Obama administration was like, all right, fine, we'll give you this. It's temporary. So, right, it wasn't, it's not a solution. There's no solution in it. It's just a Band-Aid. And we know what happens with Band-Aids. It's going to keep falling off. No, we need to challenge DACA. We don't, it doesn't help us. We need something better. We deserve something better. And quite honest, because we're contributing, like DACA recipients, I think I posted like 18, uh, DACA recipients contribute $18.1 billion to the annual, to annual, annual taxes. Like that's a lot of money. It's a lot of money that DACA recipients are contributing. We're not even talking dreamers. We're not even talking all undocumented DACA recipients. That's 600 or 700,000 person category. So we deserve to have something more substantial. A temporary protected status does not give us the opportunity to go to school, to, to work, to, to do all these things for the long term and to create a livelihood that we quite honestly, I believe we're entitled to because we are an American soil. This is the promise that America has made to anyone that steps on this soil. They've always made it. Why change it now? We've been doing it for hundreds of years. It's, um, it's interesting because, you know, we, when you ask a person specifically, do you believe that we are all equal, that we all human beings are equal? Most people, and I'm, I'm going to leave a little bit of room for those few people, most people will tell you yes, yeah. yes. Okay, so why hold this section of the population to a, to a different standard? 